Whenever possible, you should handle errors directly in the call chain. However, it's also a good idea to have a global error handler installed so that no implementation details get leaked to the public if you miss an error. In this video, we're going to create a basic minimal API with a broken endpoint. We will then create a global error handler to address the error in case we do not catch it in the specific endpoint where it happens. Now, this video is a standalone training video that will teach you a specific coding topic. Every Monday, I provide videos just like this. On Thursdays, I release a podcast videos that cover the specific topics in software development that developers need to know, but that aren't and in, don't include writing code. Now, if you're looking for a sequential training on a topic with a real world focus, you can check out imtimcorey.com where I have dozens of courses meant to prepare you to be a software developer. If you're just getting started, check out the master courses. These courses are designed to start you at the beginning and get you job ready by the end. So let's jump over to Visual Studio and we're going to create a new project. And this new project will create a ASP.NET Core Web API. And we're going to call this our, um, let's call this our error demo and our error demo app. This is going to demonstrate an error. And we're going to choose .NET 8, no authentication, yes to HTTPS, yes to open API support, don't check the do not use top level statements, and don't check the use, use controllers. We want a minimal API. We hit create, and this will create for us our minimal API with some very basic settings. I'm going to delete the .http file. We're not going to use it for this demo. And in program.cs, We've got Swagger, which is fine. We can leave that alone if we want. And we also have um, the, the basic weather forecast. We're going to get rid of that. I don't want this endpoint. We don't need it. So let's go ahead and delete this and delete the internal record as well. To kind of trim down our API just to the basics. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a very basic endpoint. App dot map get and we're going to call this um, just demo because we want to have a demo here to demonstrate what happens when we have an error and let's do this let's have no data going to it and we're going to say curly braces here and throw new exception and this will be this is a demo exception okay so that's all it does. Now, the best way to handle errors is not a global error handler. The best way to handle errors is a specific error handler in the specific area where the exception occurred. So in this case, I'd wrap this potentially bad code. Of course, this is obviously bad code, but I'd wrap this potentially bad code with a try catch maybe, or I would look for specific errors like um, the data is not found or the data is out of range or whatever those errors might be, and I would handle them specifically. But you may not catch all the errors. You may not have everything locked down tight. We're going to show you what happens if you don't. So we're pretending like we don't realize there's an exception in this, this demo. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this using the debug start without debugging. So control F5. They don't want the debugger attached because I don't want that exception to pop up here. We're just going to run this and launch the page. And when we do, we get our demo. We can say, try it out, execute. And we get this 500 response. And there's an exception. This is a demo exception. Notice program.cs line 18. We don't want to give this information out to a user. This is too much information. And in fact, if we were to come here and say message, I'm sorry, demo. We see the actual error page with the exception that was thrown, with where it was thrown, line 18, and any more details about this, including raw exception details. We don't want to give that away. So this is more like a developer error page because it's really helpful for developers to know exactly where the error is and exactly why the error occurred. But 
that's not something an end user should see. So how do we make sure we don't allow this to get out into the wild? Well, what we do is we make sure that we have a global error handler. Now, again, if I wrapped this, let's just do it real quick here. Try and we'll catch it with an exception, ex, it's fine. We'll throw the exception inside a try and then we could do something in our exception that, you know, maybe we could say something like return results dot bad request and maybe pass the message in, maybe. Um, that might be okay, it might not, um, but we can try it out. You know, we can play around with what do you wanna see from this message. And if we run this, and let's just do the slash demo here. We get, this is a demo exception, okay? Which may that message is okay, I showed the user, maybe it's not, we create our own, whatever. But that's a lot better than showing us what line number it's on and all the, the stack information and so on. So that's the ideal, is we handle it. And even if we can't do something specific with it, we can at least um, return a bad request and give a generic message or a message that may give them some information about what's going on, but not any implementation details. But there's always gonna be the possibility that we call this outside of our exception or our try catch. So how do we handle global errors? So errors that happen outside of a try catch that we don't handle properly. Well, what we can do is Let's right under this HTTP S redirection, we can say app dot use exception handler. And we're going to say, this is called our app error. No, not in quotes. App error. We're gonna say, we want to have curly braces here in IntelliSense and IntelliCodes, fight me a little bit. So um, let's, uh, turn off completions for a bit. Okay, so in here I wanna say app error dot run, and I'm gonna say async context. And then we're gonna have curly braces. We'll put our semicolon at the end. And inside this, we wanna say, let's overwrite. So this is the context being passed in is the context from the error. So you can get information about the error, but I'm actually gonna say context dot response dot status code equals 500. I'm not even allowing the status code to come through. I'm just gonna say it's a 500, which is an internal server error. And the context dot response dot content type is going to be application slash JSON. So we're gonna turn back some JSON about what's going on from this error. Now let's say var context feature equals context dot features dot get. And we're gonna get the I exception handler feature. And we're gonna say that we're open and close parentheses there. And if the context feature is not null, then we're gonna, this is where we do some logging. I'm gonna simulate logging by saying console.writeline and we'll say error and we'll just print out the context feature dot error. Okay, so this is where we, you know, log to our logger, whatever logger we have, but we don't have one right now. So that's, this is fine. And we're gonna say await context.response dot write as JSON async. We'll say new, and we're gonna create a new anonymous object. We're gonna say status code equals context dot response dot status code. Notice that's the, the 500 error we overwrote right here. Um, we're gonna say that, and we're gonna say that the message equals internal server error. Okay, so we're not gonna give any details in this message. We're gonna be very, very 
uh, generic or vague in what went wrong. We're just going to say, hey, we had an internal server error. Basically, we're not telling you anything except the fact that it didn't work. Okay. But now, since I've said app.use exception handler, what will happen is if an exception happens, then the this middleware will grab the exception, run it through this, and return this, um, this JSON object right here. So let's run this again. Oops, I hit run. I shouldn't have. Um, I'm going to stop that. I'm going to say uh, start without debugging. That way we're not um, getting that, that issue of having the debugger pop up. OK, so demo. And I can say try it out, execute. And we get back a 500. And the response body is internal server error. That's it. Okay, and if we can zoom out a little bit here, um, there we go. So it doesn't kind of overlap that. But status could have 500 messages, internal server error. That's all we know um, is we have 500. But if we come over here to our console, we can see we had that failure here. And here's where the failure is. It tells us the line number and so on. So that way we can, we can catch any unhandled exceptions and not return a useful status code or useful information that might allow a hacker to gain more access to our system or, or know the internal workings of our system. We make sure that it's locked down only to um, giving generic information that something went wrong because we don't want extra information out in the public, okay? So that's what this does. It catches this. Now, if we handle the exceptions properly, so if we you know, have a try catch and we catch the exception, return bad request, let's go ahead and start our debugging again. So we've, we've properly handled this time and then this is gonna look a little different. So if we say git, we try it out, we execute, and now we have the 400 and it says this is a demo exception. Why is it different? Because we processed it different. We return a bad request, which is a 400 message and we return the actual message, which is why we get this is a demo exception. So if we handle it, we get to choose how we process things. But in the event that we forget to wrap something in a try catch or forget to catch a, uh, a generic enough exception that would catch an, an exception we didn't expect, then we still have this to fall back on which is our global exception handler, which will handle any other exception and just give a 500 while at the same time, you know, if we have it using the logger, it would log it to the, um, the appropriate place so we can catch that in our logs and figure out what's going on, okay? So that's how to do global log, global error handling in a minimal API. Now it's pretty similar for a full API and it's pretty close for others as well. Um, but minimal APIs, I want to make sure we, we cover those because they're going to be what we're going to use quite a bit. Therefore, you should know how to do a global exception handler. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you want the source code, there's a link down in the description to get that as well. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.